so this is this is hot off the presses work. It actually just started working on this last night. I am I have an adapter, a power adapter that's European standard into a white blob that goes into an outlet, and if a moss lands on it, it's going to lose power. So we'll see if we get through this demo alive. Um, so last night I took this PC Engines 2 and I uh, flashed into it a kernel and um, and a couple of U-Root tools and it barely fit. Uh, and then I discovered that I couldn't do anything at all on the serial port and I did not care. And let me get into why I did not care, assuming that the dark angel of demos does not visit me. The reason I did not care is because I had the ultimate serial port, which is also known as Ethernet, in my favor. Now, what I want to show you is what was in the U-Root. Um, oh, yes, thank you, thank you. Um, sorry about that. There. Uh, so, so the reason is I, I I had the ultimate serial interface, which is of course Ethernet, and you know I can CPU to that node. And what is a CPU? I'm going to get into that, but um, you know here is the sum total of the U-root programs I have on this machine, which looks like about a dozen. And yet somehow I'm running Bash and LS and all this good stuff, and you know, because that's a Bash prompt, that's not Bash anywhere in the flash part, you know. And how did that work? Well, I start this CPU command, and I'll show the moving parts in a minute on on uh, another slide. And and what happens is on the client side, which is the dollar sign prompt, it establishes a connection to a CPU running in the PC engines, and it also kicks off a 9P server in the background. And it does all its SSH foo for all, and the server actually does a 9P mount back to my side, to my 9P server running as me, and mounts my namespace, which in this case is the root of the node I'm coming from on temp CPU. And then these are bind mounts of binding, vari mounting various things in my PC Engine's Linux, so that when that CPU command running on the PC Engine's execs bin bash, bin bash is actually found um, because bin, yeah, trying to type, um, you know, bin bash is a bind mount to temp CPU bin, which is mounted, you know, over temp CPU back to the machine I came from. And what this means is, you know, like, oh, I need to run flash ROM, but darn it, I didn't put flash ROM in my um, spy flash. It really doesn't matter because flash ROM is on the machine I came from, and that's mounted via 9P. So what this basically means is I can do stuff like CD, and now I'm in you know Home Arminic, and all my stuff is there, and I can do flash ROM dash R in a file, and it ends up on the machine I came from, and I can proceed to mess around with the file on the machine I came from, right? So I didn't have to SCP anything anywhere. Um, the uh, file system namespace of the machine I came from is completely visible on this PC engines. So this is a Plan 9 concept. Um, and we've been working on U-Root now for eight years, and the Go packages have been growing in capability. And just within the last year or so, we got a Go package for SSH that was perfect for the client side. And then we also got, <laughs> this is the funny part, we got a Go package for SSH that was perfect on the server side because it, it implemented port redirection. And we were kind of able to assemble this CPU command that uses lots of various bits. And, and the end result is that I can have, you know, almost nothing in the spy. I have a few key pieces. I have a DHCP client, and I have the CPU command, which runs as actually init on this machine, this PC engines. And then when I CPU in, I don't lose anything by going in there. Like when I SSH in, you know, I'd have nothing. When I CPU in, I've got every bin on the machine, including VI and Emacs and all the good stuff I'm used to. So um, it's just, this is such a, now look, there's some performance here. You can kind of see when I hit it, try and run a command, there's a teeny tiny little delay here, right? While it pulls it over the, oh, well, it's not that much of a delay. While it pulls it over the net. Um, but what's kind of cool is at some point where you're working in this and you kind of forget that you're doing all these commands in your login directory, but you're actually running on a little box down there. That's what I was doing last night. I did the flash ROM dash R and I just ran CBFS tool. I just typed it out of habit and it was a second later that I realized, oh, wait a minute. I was running that on a PC engines when it was modifying files you know, on my Linux machine. So how does all this get wired together? Um, you know, and 
Uh, and a, a lot of people don't know this, but uh, Al Furo is, was a big Nine fan back in the day and added things to Linux that made this possible. But so we have the Penguin and we have the Gopher, and that gives us the Bunny, meaning you know the Plan Nine Bunny, um, and that's the Space Bunny because it's more advanced than the old days. Um, so you type a command, it looks like an SSH, but unlike all an SSH, when you go to that remote machine, all your stuff kind of travels with you, and Yes, it looks like NFS home directories. There are a few differences. Uh, unfortunately, the serial console is broken, or I'd show you, but these are private namespace mounts, which means all the mounts that happen are not visible outside that initial process and its children. So if you go into the machine as you, you will not see my temp CPU, and I will not see your temp CPU. Those are private namespace mounts. And it's served by your server. So you don't have to go to the operator from hell and say, please set up an NFS server because I want to do this thing. It's your 9P server running as you. And that further means that even though this is a hash prompt because I'm running as root here, that did not give me special privileges on the machine I came from. So all those old defenses from the old days with NFS where, oh my god, you're root here and you're mounted there and I've got to protect myself against you because you're root, that's not an issue. There are no sort of privilege escalations because I'm root on the PC engines. And uh, you know, there's all kinds of fun stuff. Um, um, the, the APU2 in this case comes up, it's not a general purpose machine, it's a machine that knows how to do one and only one thing via CPU server. So Plan 9 hackers everywhere are happy, including me. Um, let me just do the sort of bits and pieces. So kind of what happened there is um, I, I type CPU blah 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 and it started a 9P server at a forwarding Go routine, that's just a thread in, you know, outside the Go universe. And on the right side there, there's my uh, CPU running as a NIT, and it kicks off a DH client and listens on port uh, 22. Here's the 9P server. This is actually a Rust 9P server, because it's a beautifully written 9P server from, um, I forget who did that. And then there's the 9P packet forwarder. And then, uh, you know, my client does a connect over remote with SSH protocol. That guy doesn't accept. And then I start listening on that 9P port forward. And then I'm going to talk to the remote thing and set up this redirect. Why do I set up a redirect? I'm going to do a kernel mount here, and I'm going to give it an IP address and a port, and that, that port will be the thing that goes through this redirection. And then once that redirection happens, this CPU command knows to do a mount of 9P on temp CPU and do the bind mounts. Why do I have to do the bind mounts? Because even if you try and set load library path, there's just too many dependencies in, in the Linux stuff nowadays on you know, you can't say go to there, it's going to always want to go there, and same with the various bins. So I didn't want to do the bind mounts, but there's no choice because of the way the uh, binary tools work. And then finally, um, it execs the command, and if there kind of is no command, then it looks up dollar shell in the environment, which we also forwarded across. That's bin bash. Bin bash follows this, you know, set of bind mounts through 9p and pulls the bin bash binary and all its libraries over the 9p connection and we're running the bin bash I want to run. Now, there's some fun stuff here. I'm allowed to make this be anything I want. If you're worried about access, I can have this serve a file system out of a CPIO. No problem, that's a, that's a solved problem from 30 years ago. So you don't have to serve it from a file system. You can serve it from anything that's sort of a source of data. So that's kind of cool too. Um, and so then we just do our normal SSH. And yes, these talks go fast, I'm done. So that's kind of the talk. Um, one last thing, if, if you, anyone who ever did NFS root, you remember watching like a network connection get flaky and then a thousand machines suddenly say NFS server not responding, still trying, and then just watching your whole data center collapse in a burning smoke of smoking heap. Um, this 9P thing is my 9P server, my CPU client, my CPU server. You can blow that stuff out of the water uh, I've done it a couple times because this is so flaky, and that PC engines keeps running, and I reconnect the network, and I can do another CPU session. This is nothing like sort of NFS root follies from back in the day. This is much, much more durable system. So um, I really, if, if there's interest in this in this group, where do I need help? I need help with performance. Um, I'm not going to run Emacs because it takes an embarrassingly amount, long amount of time to come up. You know, I can run this thing called God IT, and that's really how you say it. The guy who wrote it told me. Um, you know, and that kind of comes up pretty quick, and it kind of looks like Emacs. But you know, if you have a lot of files going on, 
you've got correctness here, but you don't have the kind of performance I'd like to have. I am running the FS cache. It doesn't seem to be quite doing what I hoped it would do. So anybody who wants to educate me on how to make this perform better, I'd love to have the help. But um, it is really, I'd forgotten how nice this was from back in the day when I was a Plan 9 guy. It's just incredibly nice to CPU to a machine and just have everything there, to have it not really look any different than the machine you came from. So, you know, if you're at all interested, I'd really recommend you give it a shot. So that is that. I can type commands if you want me to. All right, thank you very much. So we have the microphones back. If you have any questions, please feel free. How does the cross-compile story look like? <laughs> it's actually real good, because uh, following the way Plan 9 always did things, if I have a root like slash AMD, I could start that 9P server and make slash AMD the root of the namespace, and then all the binaries just work. So again, this is, this is literally a solved problem. Um, I actually have, by the way, in, in, getting back to embarrassing, yeah, I have done a go run in here, and it takes a little longer than I'd like. A lot of files. Go ahead. Uh, do you need server su uh, kernel support for the 9P stuff, you, or is it fused? You absolutely need the 9P client compiled into the kernel and the PC engines. And I haven't made, I haven't seen an advantage yet, but I have compiled an FS cache. I can't tell if it helped or not. Okay. But you do need a 9P client file system. All right, that's it. We're doing well. We're already 10 minutes ahead. Thanks, everyone.